Hello, I'm Jonathan Bowman Perks and welcome back to my favourite time of the week. And I'm delighted to have Stefan Barden with me, who I've known Pleasure. for a number of years. Mm. Um, and we're talking about inspiring leadership. So Stefan, mm. um, tell us a bit about yourself so people know what you've done mm. and what you're doing now. Mm. Uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I'm, you know, the, the greatest example of inspiring leadership, but uh, I've had an you know, interesting journey in life. Um, I came from a family that has no background in business whatsoever. Yeah. Um, and I've had great mentors as I've gone through my career. Um, I started off as an engineer uh, and was sponsored by Unilever on their international uh, training program. And I guess my career is, uh, can be divided into three parts. The first of about 10 years, started off with seven years uh, with Unilever, um, both in the UK and internationally, in engineering, and then moving into marketing and sales. Um, then an MBA, fully oh, yeah, expecting, right, yeah, fully, yeah, fully expecting to go back to Unilever, but was approached by McKinsey. Um, so I went and did what I, you know, later look back on as my PhD in business at McKinsey. Did three, three and a half years there, uh, and I had uh, when I joined thirteen things, a baker's dozen of things that I wanted to do, uh, and I spent my time finding studies to do every single one of those. Right, yeah. So. After 10 years, uh, my sort of apprenticeship was over uh, and I felt that I ought to do a real job and uh, was um, uh, started looking at, at, at a variety of, uh, of roles and I then started getting into general management. Yeah. Um, so I started off in Ice and Frozen Foods, uh, running their grocery business in my sort of early 30s and uh, moved through a progression of companies, eventually uh, the CEO of Heinz UK and Ireland um, yeah. at the age of 39. Very good. Um, and, and then later on, uh, uh, running a FTSE 250 company, Northern Foods, uh, in my early 40s, yeah. through, 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 through the majority of my 40s. Um, and uh, um, then uh, as I approached 50, I went into the third stage of my career, which was sort of mentoring yeah. uh, people. So I was able to step back a little bit and uh, really start to focus on giving back to the next generation and really working with entrepreneurs um, and entrepreneurs of high growth companies and companies that had a real ambition to change the world, become number one in their particular uh, environment and uh, not, not particularly helping them in their particular area of excellence because they would know a lot about that, but how do they then grow out the business, go through the growth phases and in particular work with the boards work with, uh, build executive teams around them so that they get stuff done yeah. and keep the momentum going. So there's a lot of growth phases and the way that the businesses um, have to be restructured as they go through each uh, phase takes takes you know some thinking through and yeah. I'm able to help them do that. Great. And that's what I've been doing. Fantastic. So, uh, and, you talked, and you talked about um, some people have really influenced you mm. and, and uh, mentored you. Mm. Uh, this, this series is about inspiring leadership. Mm. Who, who did you find uh, if you pick one who was an inspiring leader, who, yeah. who, who was it? And, well, and what were their qualities that you, yeah. you'd say others who are listening should, yeah. should try and um, pick up some of those skills? Because some yeah. of them are just skills as so, well as uh, Exactly. So, yeah. And um, so uh, it, it's, it's always embarrassing to, um, you know, pick people because then you feel like you've, you've not, you, there are others who are very good and, and have helped you a lot who you, who you haven't mentioned. So you know, you could pick your parents and genuinely my parents have been an influence on me, my mother and father for very different reasons. Um, and, and they le left me very grounded. Uh, I could pick um, a guy called uh, John Sharp, who was the CEO of Alida Fabergé, my very first Unilever um, uh, business unit that, mm. that I went into, very inspirational and um, uh, enabled me to think about the world in completely different ways. I could choose people like Malcolm Walker, the entrepreneur who, who built Ice and Frozen Foods. When I went there, that was fascinating learning about entrepreneurship th through watching him. And what was it? What were yeah. his skills that if you picked out one that you... Well, the person I would choose is actually Ian Davis, who okay. was, um, when I was at McKinsey, he was, uh, he was the head of the uh, European uh, consumer group, but he went on to run the UK office for three times three years, which is the maximum you can do, and then the, and then the global firm. Oh, right. And what he was really good at was simplifying the issues yeah. <laughs> um, to, to the crux of what the problem was that we were solving for the client. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's a great thing that McKinsey does. So in times of stress, 
Um, what's the real thing, the root cause of all of these issues? Yeah. And then how do we solve it as simply as possible? And the second thing was solving these problems with humanity. Yes. You know, so it's not that everybody's rubbish. Yeah. It's just that people have got a little bit lost or there's some conflicting views in the, in the company that need to yeah. be helped through. But everybody's actually a fantastic person around the table. Uh, so, so that yeah, was probably the biggest influence. Excellent. And what about um, learning from your own mistakes? Cause, yes. Because uh, humility is a key yes. quality in leaders. And, and also admitting that we make mistakes. Some people think they've never yes. made any mistakes. Uh, that, like Donald Trump, he's never made a yeah. mistake. But, but <laughs> right? what, what yeah. did you learn from, from one of your mistakes? Yeah, and and yeah. What, how would you learn it to, to share with others? So they can well, I'm sure, I'm sure I've had many mistakes um, and, and, and hopefully a few good decisions along the way. But I think, you know, I've, I've made more bad decisions than, than, than good ones. And I think the trick is simply this. Reflect at the end of the day what worked well and what could be even better. And the thing to do is that the small mistakes get get stay small, yeah. um, and the big uh, successes you have, you double up on them, yeah. and they get bigger and bigger and bigger. So uh, it's trying to make the best decisions you can, mm. um, and um, and then reflect every single day on what's working well. And one of the performance uh, coaching things that I try and put into the teams that I work with is a weekly reflection, if not a daily reflection, yes, but a weekly yeah, team reflection yeah. on these things. So there are many, many mistakes. It, my biggest mistake really is around um, doing things when I've taken advice that my gut doesn't think is right. And I yes. think the key learning is at the end of the day, you have to retain responsibility for the decisions you make. Yes. Okay. Yes. And even if you take advice widely, if it's if it doesn't feel right, don't do it. That's actually a coaching uh, tip that I give my my, yeah, my CEOs I, I, as well. I you know, if it doesn't feel right, don't do it. And and um, I this is you know in particular, I've done this on hiring. So yeah, everybody's t- we're all coming to a conclusion, and mentally we want something to su- to succeed. We we've got somebody that fits the brief, and there's just something in my gut saying no. And when I have hired. Later on, we find out what my gut was yeah. telling me. Yeah, so, it's very yeah, true. Um, yeah. Alison Nemo in her session said, um, "Ha slowly, fire yeah. quickly." Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. take take time. Good Finally, uh, your, your top tip. What would it be to to the listeners? Oh, uh, top leadership tip. Yeah, we could talk about focus because without focus and a goal, you can't get started. We could talk about um, you know energy and drive because you need to put momentum and and, and effort into things. But I, I guess the top tip would be resilience. Yeah. just have to keep going yeah. and there's, there's two lenses to resilience one would be um getting up when you get knocked down yeah uh, but the other is just keeping going and uh you know I, I do a lot of endurance sports and that's a great metaphor i think yeah. is you know what you've got to do to get to the end your brain doesn't want you to do it particularly <laughs> but when you do do it there's such a um, um you know such a, a sense of achievement yeah. and, and 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 doing the goal so keeping going resilience is Brilliant. my key tip Stefan, thank you. Wise words as always. Great spending time with you. Thank you. Really, really appreciate that. Thank you.